Welcome to week four. This week, we're going to focus on audiences. Individuals and organizations involved in social entrepreneurship have to reach a huge range of audiences. These audiences include the public, customers, volunteers, funders, venture capitalists, and more. The audiences also include policymakers, government officials, and of course, the audience includes those the entrepreneurial effort is seeking to reach and to help. You'll read more about audiences and stakeholders in our week four materials, which I'll introduce in a moment. But first, I want to talk about the how and the where of social entrepreneurial work, specifically how people work together and where they do that work. In Western culture, when we think about artists or creatives, we might bring to mind images like this or this. When we think about writers as creatives, we might bring to mind images like this or this. Generally, we have a very historic and romantic notion of art, authorship, and creativity. We have a lone man. He's sitting at a desk, maybe a candle burning, perhaps a glass of bourbon at his elbow. He's toiling alone at his craft. He's a creative genius, and his creativity is an individual, isolated act. I don't think that these notions, even though they're powerful and we still carry them with us, correctly capture creativity as we enact it today in our personal or professional lives. Technologies, changing professional contexts, and more have transformed how we're creative. And the spaces in which we work and create today look more like this, and this, and this, and this, and more and more recently like this. Another is Microsoft Teams, which we all have access to through our MSU Net IDs and our Microsoft software accounts. Another tool for online collaboration is Social Pinpoint, which is specifically designed for community engagement projects and an amazing tool for folks doing social or cultural entrepreneurial work. Social Pinpoint includes tools for creating surveys, hosting forums, producing interactive maps, and other ways of rallying collaborative creative processes. This is an example of an idea wall anchored to a map in Social Pinpoint. People can identify a space on the map and offer comments, suggestions, responses about how, for instance, the space might be developed or used differently. So a community can work together. So how people work and write and create and design look a lot different today. And further, none of the social or cultural entrepreneurs we've read about have worked in isolation. All of the people and all the projects we've explored thus far have been collaborative ventures. Think about what we've read and learned about Blake Mykoski, the founder and chief shoe giver of Tom's Shoes. Mykoski was stunned when he found out that many people, especially in developing countries, lack shoes. He met a woman who worked with a volunteer group that held shoe drives. He paired with another guy he knew, and together Blake and Alejo started researching sustainable shoe production. He came back to the U.S. and bounced ideas off of friends and colleagues. And on his path to more conscious, attentive capitalism, he worked with, collaborated with, and led teams of people. And this is Blake Mykoski's office, designed not with a huge desk for him to sit behind, but rather with a living room feel, inviting people to share, talk, and collaborate. <laughs> Collaboration is necessary across all social entrepreneurial projects and work, and I would argue across all work, period. Collaboration requires space. These spaces might be digital and online, like Zoom, Teams, or Social Pinpoint, or they might be physical. Space to move, space to share, space to see each other, space to connect and to create. I want to focus on physical spaces here, and I hope we can soon gather again in these spaces. Three great spaces that support collaborative work are first, The Hub, MSU's brainstorming and innovation studio. In the past few months, folks at The Hub have taken the lead on helping the entire MSU community transition to online teaching. As for the physical space in Wells Hall, The Hub is great for brainstorming sessions for big groups, conversations among smaller groups, presentations. The Hub also has some of the snares to where's artwork on display that we read about week two of class. The second space on campus is the main library, which has a new maker space on the second floor west side. There are tons of comfortable, creative, flexible spaces to work and toys to fiddle with and imagine with and brainstorm with. Make space, 
also has 3D printers, laser and vinyl cutters, and more. You can check out a technology you might need, for instance, a DSLR camera to shoot and edit a video to promote your social entrepreneurial idea. You can also see tons of examples of work produced with our 3D printers. The main library also hosts a new digital scholarship lab, which is on the same floor as Make Central. There are a handful of great meeting spaces and rooms. You can reserve them online for individual or group work. We have a virtual reality lab and tools and an immersive 360 experience lab. Finally, just north of campus, right across Grand River, is Spartan Innovations, which is home to The Hatch, and is also an amazing place to get hands-on support for your startup. The Hatch is a co-working space for students working on entrepreneurial projects. We'll talk more soon about spaces and how they can facilitate or crush creativity. And for project three, you'll be working collaboratively to design a new space on campus for students to work on social entrepreneurial projects. <laughs> Collaboration is gonna be a big part of your working life. I recently went to the websites of three companies that regularly seek out and hire MSU grads, and all three emphasize collaboration and creativity is key to their company missions and is desirable among new employees. First, I went to corporate.ford.com into the careers area. This is separate from their customer-facing Ford.com site. Ford headquarters here in Michigan has an open post for what they describe as a startup business within their large company, so an intrapreneurial opportunity. Ford is developing a pickup and delivery business. The job post specifically mentions many entrepreneurial characteristics, managing budgets, identifying opportunities, navigating market trends, and more. The position also emphasizes collaboration and cross-function teamwork. And the post ends with part of Ford's mission. Join our team as we create tomorrow. We believe in putting people first, working together, and facing challenges head on. We're one team striving to make people's lives better. I also looked at Dow with headquarters here in Midland. Again, I went to the corporate.dow.com site, which provides information specifically for investors, employees, and job seekers. Dow has open posts in supply chain, manufacturing, engineering, and marketing here in the US, in France, in Thailand, in Canada, and all over the world. Every job post I looked for asked for candidates with strong specific skills related to the position. For instance, if the position is supply chain, obviously they want people who get logistics and can identify and coordinate resources across projects. But every job also asks for candidates who have strong interpersonal communication and teamwork skills. Finally, I went to Target's corporate site and into their career area. Target's headquarters are in Minneapolis, and they're featuring supply chain jobs right now there in Indianapolis and Arizona, California, and other states. One post for a lead artificial intelligence supply chain analyst is for someone who works with machine learning algorithms and math models to understand supply trends. The job calls for some really specific skills like being able to produce rock solid, well-structured, and efficient code. But the job post also lists the partners the person has to collaborate with, ranging from engineers, business partners, and other data scientists. And Target also has positions available with the Target Foundation, which is Target's corporate responsibility branch, which engages in a range of community, civic, and advocacy work, some of which falls under social entrepreneurship. So whether you end up forging your own path as a social entrepreneur and launching a nonprofit or a socially engaged business, or you wind up working for another business or company or organization, creativity is key, collaboration matters, and an entrepreneurial skill set will serve you wherever you go. Collaboration doesn't just happen, as you likely know. Collaboration requires specific approaches or techniques. And I would argue that one key approach is knowing yourself reflecting and being aware of what sorts of roles you're attracted to and where your skills shine. Are you best managing a team? Or are you better being a team member? Are you good at thinking about the big picture? Or do you prefer to focus on small details? How do you like to express yourself? Are you a good researcher? And you have to be honest with yourself. Do you tend to not participate and withdraw from a project if it moves away from your immediate interests? Are you most comfortable not sharing your ideas until they're fully formed? Are you just not a motivated person? Do you typically put in a minimum amount of effort in collaborative work? And if you're not that motivated, where, how, when, and why 
do you find yourself motivated? Are you good at reflecting? Are you good at evaluating your own work and critically asking yourself how good it was, whether it got the response you desired? So from all of this, take away a few things. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Know how to best share those with others so you can lean on others and you can help others. And importantly, have tools, approaches, and methods for collaborating. This is going to be really important for Project 3, which is a collaborative project. We'll start after your turn in Project 2 this Sunday, June 7. Smart organizations and smart managers and smart entrepreneurs have approaches to fostering collaboration. They don't just expect people to magically work well, efficiently, and productively together. Disney, for instance, required different types of people to play different roles. When he put together teams, he assigned a dreamer, a realist, and a spoiler to each team to push the team's thinking forward. Pixar uses the process of plussing during collaborative projects. They don't encourage people to critique other people's ideas, but rather to build on them and extend them. IDEO is a design and innovation consulting firm, and they suggest when its creative teams start working on a project, they defer judgment, encourage wild ideas, build on each other's ideas, stay focused, and more. You'll be working collaboratively on Project 3, so I hope you will first kind of analyze yourself and assess your collaborative abilities and skills. And then second, you'll try out some of these techniques and others. Our readings for week four focus on collaboration and on audiences, the range of leaders, stakeholders, and participants involved in social entrepreneurial initiatives. We'll start with a chapter called The Ecosystems, in which the authors describe the larger, broader context of social entrepreneurial work. And then we're going to read conversations from a book called The Real Problem Solvers, Social Entrepreneurs in America. We're going to read a conversation between entrepreneurs, between funders and investors, between thinkers and innovators, and finally between champions, the necessary supporters of social entrepreneurial initiatives. We have one case for this week. It's MSU's land grant goods site and store. And we have one spark for the week. The Forbes magazine article titled 30 Under 30. Skim through these profiles of social entrepreneurs and maybe read a couple that stand out to you or interest you. I'm going to email you my Project 2 grading rubric, which should be helpful as you continue to work on Project 2. I'm prepping to turn in this Sunday, June 7th, by noon Eastern to D2L. If you have any questions this week as you explore the readings, case, and spark, as you post a question and a response on Packback, or as you continue to work on Project 2, please email me.